Good afternoon. Well, welcome to the show again. I'm still privileged to uh, fill in for Betsy uh, Maston and, and in my father's house. She has a great program, and I, uh, I appreciate uh, her commitment. Uh, anyway, my program is The Last American Patriots, and I've got a lot of information to share with you today, so I'm going to get right into it. I know I covered some last week, but the problem is, is I didn't get all of it, and I may repeat some. So for you folks that, that have seen that before, you'll just have to kind of overlook it, and I'll get into the, the, uh, the information. Those of you also in Mississippi, I'll be talking about a senator in Alabama, a uh, so-called senator, and it's, it's kind of bad. So you bear with me on that as well, because I do need to expose uh, all of their lies, because I call it the dirty money and dirty Doug and dirty Joe Biden, and, and as well as Biden's crimes. I, I just, I've, I've just got to cover as well the Doug Jones. So, the one thing that you can remember, all right, and you need to get straight, that they are bald-faced liars. I'll show that as this program goes on. It's, it's so bad in American politics now that the dirt and the, the, the claims and the lies that these people tell have got to be straightened out because this election coming up is very, very important. So... How can you even consider voting for one of those people when you know that, when you know that they're liars? Um, you, and you must remember that the Democrat Party and the media is tied together, and both of them lie. Uh, you also must remember that you're not voting for uh, Doug Jones or Joe Biden. You're voting for their party. And I want to I prove that as I go through these points, because as Doug makes some claims... It's a lie when, when in reference to his party. So we know that their party platform is very much pro-abortion. It's pro-homosexual. It is pro-illegals and even those illegals voting. It is pro-Muslim with the insurgent of Muslims coming in. And when President Trump tried to stop those from the COVID-rich uh, uh, states, uh, he got, of course, he got heck from these people again. But that's what they really are. They're, they're radical pro-abortion. They're also uh, anarchist. They're, they're radical left wing. They're for sanctuary cities. And that's also uh, tearing down our cities, tearing down our nation, tearing down even our voting uh, blocks because all these people can hide in these cities and not be deported. They are increasingly in America, anti-Christian. They're anti-American. They're anti-border sovereignty or border security. They're anti-military. Uh, and then Doug Jones dares put out this uh, ad about how he and this army officer he got paid off uh, talks about how much they voted in their uh, armed services committee to support the military only because the voting was already there anyway. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been it. They're also pro-taxes, and none of those taxes went to the military, I might add. Why? Because it went to their favorite social programs. Uh, they use welfare and entitlements, food stamps, social security, and socialized medicine as their political football to kick around as they, as they like. Uh, they're, uh, they're not only radical in those areas, but in voter fraud. They're radical, talking about wanting 52 states, uh, stacking and expanding the Supreme Court into more members, and then stacking it uh, with extreme left-wing justices is terrible. Our original Constitution absolutely meant no such activity. They're all supposed to be American constitutional patriots, and that's where they need to be. Uh, you, you, you might notice that Doug Jones mentioned how uh, that uh, his opponent is uh, against the ACA, which is actually Obamacare. Uh, again, he's, he's made uh, no such commitments to that at all. And the pre-existing conditions they talk about has been proven time and time again. The president even said that they've never been in the debate at all. 
uh, they'll totally be protected. Uh, privatizing Social Security, they've never made any comments or even any uh, commitments to privatizing, even though I feel some uh, parts of it should be, because some of the other gets political. Uh, he, then he talks about the resident of uh, Tuberville. It, it's really sad. He was like 10 years uh, at Auburn uh, or more, and and also had a home in Florida. So when he moved back into Alabama, uh, he claimed he was been here only 18 months, and that's that's a total lie. Also, uh, his ad on taxes—they're the ones that increase taxes. They say well, we're only going to increase it on those making over. Uh, 400,000. Well, folks, if you believe that, you believe that you like your doctor, then you can keep him. Remember years ago when they said we're only going to raise taxes on the rich? Come to find out, always the middle class, working class people in America get taxed. And so it, it's a lie. It won't be just those over 400,000. And let me give you an example of what goes on in America. Do you understand that the top 10% in the United States, the top 10% earners, the top 10% of the USA in their income, pay almost 90% of the taxes. So don't let people tell you that the rich don't pay the taxes. That's not true. Uh, and as I told you, they ex uh, expect to stack and expand the Supreme Court. They had lies also on COVID-19. Uh, that, oh, the president's response to that was not early enough. Uh, he didn't tell the American people early enough. Actually, the president knew finally in mid-February. The Chinese didn't even admit that there was a problem until then. So you're going to see that uh, and hear that quite often. Those are just continual lies that they tell. They have no program. They have no plan. So they must criticize the president. And then when he stopped those coming in with COVID-19, they criticized that. I suppose if he had done the opposite, they would have criticized that. So you need to be aware of that, and you need to know what these people are doing. They're really radical socialists, and they're trying to disrupt our election, our electoral process, and therefore divide Americans, and then they uh, can move in and take over. Uh, they talk about rich Republicans. Would you believe they have over two times the money in most of their candidates because as I mentioned at the beginning, it's dirty money, folks. It is dirty money. It comes from Planned Parenthood, George Soros, the labor unions, Hollywood, and even some radical U.S. companies. It's sad that they give these people money, but they do. Uh, they, now, now they want to talk about minimum wage. Would you believe the last few times they changed minimum wage, we had about another hundred businesses go overseas and about another million or so people become unemployed. So it, it is not a very, very smart thing to demand a federal uh, minimum wage. Uh, the thing of it is, uh, the difference in Alabama and New York is, is a world apart, a world apart, and therefore should be left to the states and their, their individual counties to, to work on those uh, different problems. They love to talk about, again, the, their green energy. It is a total disaster for the economy, just like the minimum wage. Uh, we lose, again, national jobs. They gain some green jobs, quote, but it, it's very, very limited and very, very small. The bureaucracy to set up such a system as a Green New Deal is beyond belief and Many numbers have been kicked around, even up to $80, $90 trillion uh, they want to spend in their Green New Deal. You've got these radicals. A lot of those are Muslims. Omar, Cortez, th that's some of their talking. And they're, they're too young. They're uninformed. They're not wise. They don't have wisdom. They don't have any age for wisdom. And therefore, they've got a real problem. Uh, we've... We need to go back and talk about Obama. Obama has been campaigning here of, for Biden. Uh, he is guilty of the FBI and the FISA court lies about Russia and the Russian inclusion, illegal spying on the president's campaign. Can you imagine in America, folks, 
That's exactly what's happened. So don't listen to them, okay, as they campaign uh, for Biden. Obama is guilty uh, as some of these uh, Biden people are today. So since the media won't cover it, you can't fire them like you can our government people, but you need to demand. And demanding from them means boycotting, okay? You need to boycott them and, and force them to start going back to a more, more normal and a truthful reporting of the news. So uh, I've, just, I've just got to say, as I mentioned last week, don't ever vote for any of these Democrats because it's their party platform that is so radical, so homosexual, so socialist, so pro-abortion. Uh, again, their pro-abortion problem alone should be enough to turn them down. So from this, I'd like to get on in to, uh, to the uh, implications of the Biden family getting involved in the money laundering, the pay-for-play, uh, the the uh, absolutely just uh, bribery, extortion uh, from Russia, Ukraine, and China, and all of their denial. Again, you need to require that the media covers this. They don't want to cover it, but you need to tell them to, to get busy and do that. Former business partners of Joe and Hunter Biden, uh, Tony Bobolinsky, you've heard his name in the news lately. He's blown the whistle on the Bidens for their pay-to-play and pay-to-influence and their money laundering with communist China. A lot of people don't realize that many people that are in there want access to our White House. Why? Because not only can they steal more secrets, but they can uh, infiltrate our government operations and our governmental uh, committees. The lobbying is, is really it must stop. So... Uh, uh, he's become a key figure in the Senate Homeland Security Government Affairs Committee and the Senate Committee, which is go ongoing right now, investigating the Biden's connections with Russia, Ukraine, and China. Uh, Bobolinsky says uh, he released a public statement Wednesday detailing his relationships with the Biden uh, as CEO of Sinohawk. Okay, they sent up Sino, just meaning uh, China, Chinese, China-related uh and then the hawk being, I think, one of his brother's favorite birds or whatever. So be aware of that. And the partnership between Joe and Hunter uh, and the CEFC, uh, and that's a Chinese uh, established organization, uh, one of many. Their chairman, uh, Yi Jinming, is being held by the Chinese Communist Party. Say again, he has ties to the Communist Party, and they're afraid of his testimony. Uh, and that was even uh, for his uh, bribery in uh, gaining oil rights in Africa. Can you imagine Biden talking about being against the oil industry and then doing something like this in Africa? Folks, I'm asking you, wake up. Please know this stuff. Uh, in one of Hunter's emails, he asked Joe for lobbying connections um, for these people who actually in this case came in from China and uh, the, the proof is there. The, the email has now been exposed, and he actually asked his father to uh, lend his influence to bring them in. Bobolinsky states he has an extensive uh, relevant records and communications. He intends to produce those with the, both the committees, uh, and that's, I just mentioned those in the Senate and uh, the Congress. Uh, they were brought in to the uh, company by CEO to James Gilliar and Hunter Biden. Uh, the H that they talk about in one of these, uh, I suppose, e emails or the uh, whatever communications they get, they, they reference also the big guy. So H is for Hunter. The big guy is, of course, Joe Biden, and he explains that. The other term JB referenced in the emails is Jim Biden. That's Joe's brother. Uh, Hunter Biden calls his uh, dad the big guy or his chairman, frequently referenced him for sign-off and advice. See, that's where these emails started changing uh, uh, exchange in, in places here uh, on the various p potential deals that they were discussing. He says, I've even seen ex-Vice President 
a Biden saying he never talked to Hunter about his businesses. That's a total lie, he says. I've seen it firsthand because it wasn't just Hunter's business. They said it was putting the Biden family name on a legacy or the Biden family legacy. Folks, it's really bad. They were looking at this political uh, as a political and influence investment, of course, not a, uh, any good for ROI, return on investment. Once I realized a hunter wanted to use a company has his personal piggy bank, I just uh, by just taking money out of it, as soon as it came from China, I took steps. I took steps to prevent that from happening. The Johnson report, and I and I'm not even in totally detailed on that report, but it is one that's kind of exposes uh, what's going on here. It connected some dots for me, but in a way that it really shocked me. It made me realize that Biden, Biden's had gone behind my back and had gotten paid millions of dollars by China, and they said they would never do that. The Biden family aggressively leveraged um, of the Biden family name and to get millions of dollars from foreign entities, and especially the lobbying in our in Washington, of which we know that Joe knew about it because he influenced and helped Hunter get uh, these foreign lobbyists uh, into uh, our Congress and into the United States. The observations, if Bob Alinsky is credible, Joe and Hunter Biden were in business with a communist Chinese national, and that's who they think this uh, Xin Ming is. Uh, he is in prison because his partners uh, uh, bribed the African government for their old rights. We just mentioned that. Joe Biden not only knew that his son's business uh, deals were and what they were doing, but he helped him go there on Air Force Two. Uh, this wasn't mentioned in this particular item, but it was an integral part of them. And Joe Biden used his position as the vice president to enrich himself and his family. In the debate, remember people, he said he didn't get any money, but actually his family did. They got millions upon millions of dollars. He wasn't even worth 500000 you know, when, uh, when he left office. But now he's worth millions. And it's his family, so it includes him. Not only is Joe Biden unfit for office because of these dealings, okay, because of enriching his own family, his own personal interest, bribery, extortion, but because of these dealings, he's a risk to our national security. And folks, that is very true. He's compromised. He's a compromised candidate. The Democrat should withdraw his name. Folks, it should really go beyond that, but uh, I can tell you it, uh, it probably won't. So uh, Bill Wilson here asks you, don't be deceived, okay, folks, by all of this. Please don't be deceived. The Biden scandal, uh, the Breitbart reports that Joe Biden is refusing to discuss uh, the uh, exposure by the New York Post alleging that this ex-vice president, youngest son, leveraged his ties to the Obama administration. There's another tie into Obama for the benefit of Ukrainian national gas conglomerate. And, of course, you know that is Burisma. Uh, the Democrat nominees long struggled to explain his son's overseas businesses because he wants to pretend he doesn't know anything about them. He was asked about the story during a campaign, and, then, of course, he denied the whole thing. The plot thickens. Breitbart says that this Peter Schweitzer uh, said a Hunter's, uh, Hunter Biden's former business partner, Bevan Cooney, is going to provide 26,000 emails uh, to him. Cooney's currently serving a sentence for deals he made in connection with Hunter Biden. Can you imagine? You see, you see the thing unfolding, folks. And another partner, Devon Archer, Archer also convicted by a federal jury. He's awaiting sentences but again, on separate uh, and non non connective items to uh, to Hunter Biden's business, um, his Gmail account, because Cooney believes he was the fall guy, okay, and he's he's given him written authorization to access it. The Biden's family corruption and believes that the public um, really shouldn't know, but they need to know. The first Breitbart article from the emails detailed how Hunter Biden and his partner secured meetings with senior White House officials. And we know that. I just talked about it, getting access to the White House and the Congress um, for the Chinese communist elites. Again, they list them, okay? Including a secret meeting 
with the then Vice President Joe Biden himself, of which he denies. But the information is there, folks. There are four of them. I really wanted to cover those, and I'd like to cover them here quickly, even if I don't get for the rest of this. But the Biden campaign has not responded for request, and of course they're not. Uh, they, they couldn't afford to. Uh, the, uh, the, the post-debate fact check uh, by Breitbart indicated uh, Biden lied essentially about everything. But then the Washington Compost, of course, again, uh, a left-wing socialist newspaper in Washington, says Trump lied about uh, some of his points. So the left-stream media is the one that is the liar. Once more, the Russians and the Chinese and the Iranians, they really don't have to interfere in this election because the news media and the Democrat Party are doing just fine <laughs> in the propaganda war themselves. Immediately after the debate on ABC News, comrade George Stephanopoulos emphatically stated that Trump had gone after Biden on charges that were unsubstantiated, listen to these words, folks, inaccurate and lack direct evidence. I'm going to give you plenty. So um, the, uh, the other media outlets have described Biden's corruption as outrageous and unsubstantiated. Uh, Biden calls a whole mess another Russian conspiracy. Yeah, he'd like to blame the Russians for it. Uh, that's taken from Bill and Hillary, Bill and Hillary Clinton off uh, campaign manual. Biden's defense was to deny, lie, and vilify. Remember those? Lie, deny, deny, vilify. That's how they get away with it. And then refuse to talk about it. Uh, Biden's def uh, defense, as far as I'm concerned, is non-existence. Then he and Hunter uh, and the family got millions. Partly of it was tax-free. Part, part of it was tax-free. The left-stream news media refuses to acknowledge that there are, are four sources, okay? And I want to list all of them for you because here's the proof that Stephanopoulos says didn't exist. The first one is the videos in Ukraine that Joe was sitting there in front of a camera and real dumb-like made himself. Uh, and he, he talked about getting the, uh, the prosecutor fired. The second one, there's an ongoing investigation conducted by the Senate, and hopefully they've had that long enough, hopefully they get the information out to the American people. The third, there's the Hunter Biden laptops. Plenty of information on the laptop, and all the emails. And the time of the corrupt business deals that he did with Hunter and, uh, and this uh, Bevan Cooney, I, I mean, is it, all the information is there, folks. There's the, there's the latest business partner of Joe Biden, who is Tony Bobolinsky, we just mentioned him, who has documented proof, okay, documented proof that Joe and Hunter Biden were milking the communist Chinese for millions of dollars for access to the U.S. government in the White House. Folks, you got to know this. You got to know it. He's turning over the emails and documents to the Senate. And I say, please, uh, and the FBI, but please turn it over also to the DOJ because they also need to get involved. For the news media to listen to all this evidence and not look into the story is not only biased, themselves, but it's totally irresponsible. This is Bill Wilson's words. For the news media to dismiss this story outright is because they say it lacks evidence is irreprehensible. Remember, there was a story with far less uh, a time ago, and who did they say that was? Well, um, the Steele dossier and fabricated by the Democrat National Committee and um, Hillary Clinton. It's, it's horrible that this thing happens and there's two sets of rules in America. It's just really, really bad. Uh, I wanted to share here uh, one of the verses because, you know, I mentioned last week uh, Matthew 24 and 4. But now I like this one from Bill that talks about Isaiah 59, 14. Speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart, Words of falsehood and judgment is turned away backwards and justice stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. 
I can remember reading those words many years ago. They're really applicable for us today. So, folks, I really wanted you to, to know those things. And uh, I really wanted to talk even more about the, uh, the, the plan to, uh, to enrich themselves that, that Biden is guilty of doing. There's plenty of proof here. Uh, ask your congressman. Get them to get involved in this. Because when he claims he didn't know anything about it, it's just not true. It is totally not true. The, uh, the, the, the Bidens here uh, being let off the hook by uh, Congress and the DOJ is also bad. Uh, he didn't have to answer any questions about these unethical and mostly illegal dealings. Biden denied, and get, uh, denied getting any of this money, but I just mentioned to you that his family received all of that. And they set up several uh, companies uh, that is incorporated. We also find that uh, Joe Biden, one of those asking for the president's tax returns and lying about the, the uh, probably the Washington compost again, about seven hundred and uh, $50,000 he paid, uh, which uh, $750, whatever the number was. It's really sad because he had actually paid in millions in overpayment in some instances. And then Joe Biden, with his corporations, found out that he didn't, he didn't pay any Medicare or any of the Obamacare, the one thing that he was talking about pushing. So know where the lies are. Know where the points remain. And folks, I tell you, the time races by. But please, just don't trust anybody in the Democrat Party. Okay? The, the proof is here. They're all guilty of it. Uh, right now, they're, they're fighting tooth and nail to even keep a constitutional, uh, solid woman off the Supreme Court. All part of the Democrat plan. That is their, that is our modus operandi. That's their mode of operation. And please, carefully consider, pray about this, but then know about it, take some action about it, and come November, well, who votes on November 3rd anymore? I think you can vote plenty early. Some states are voting late, but just remember, don't accept just anybody's word. Like I did, go dig up the facts, and you'll know, and you'll have the word yourself. So, I asked President Trump to declare martial law and require all these people to have ID in, in the precincts and registration, or don't accept their votes. But then again, I, I don't run the, the White House. Please do the right thing. Be careful out there. Just stay away from the virus. God bless you. And you folks, remember to do the right thing. Thank you very much.